Well, hello for you, and welcome to your new unit. Uh, we're talking about radian measure today, and our goal, I know the difference between degrees and radians and how to switch between them. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. What is a radian? Now, you may have seen radians mentioned in previous textbooks, uh, but even if you have, uh, you probably didn't go into it too much. Um, I generally mention radians when I introduce trigonometry uh, because there is that RAD button on your calculator that you have to make sure that your calculator is not in in order to get the right answer. Um, well, now we are going to actually use that RAD button on your calculator or to start with we're actually going to use um, our knowledge of what an actual radian is. Now degrees divide one full rotation into 360 parts. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're aware of this. If I were to draw a circle and split it up into 360 equal parts, one of these little pieces in that 360 parts would be a degree. Now it's very small, you know what it looks like on a on a protractor, there's just a very tiny little sliver um, for a degree. Radians, gosh and I fixed that, radian measure, this should be an A and an N, we're not talking about radium, radian measure divides up a circle into a different number of parts. Well how many parts? Well I'm going to tell you what the definition of a radian is first. If we draw a circle, a radian is the angle at the center, this one in here, where two radii subtend an arc, I should say an, subtend an arc of the same length as the radius. Okay, what the heck does that mean? Subtend? Okay, subtend means that we've got these two radius and this is the arc we're talking about here. Subtend means that one radius starts, or that the two radius um, make up the arc is what subtending means. Okay, so here's the arc we're talking about. We're talking about this arc here. And what this means with our radian measure is that uh, if this is a radian in here, this measure in here is a radian, that means that the two radius are the same length as this arc. So this curved surface is exactly the same as those two things in there. Okay, that's what it means. So how many radians are in a full rotation then? Well, let's think. We got to think about how many of these can fit in the circle. So I could have, I need another arc over here and then I'll get another arc of the same over here. Um, and well, if we actually let this be R, um, since it's the radius. We know that the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. That's the circumference of a circle. One full circle has a circumference of 2 pi r. So I want to see how many of these arcs fit around the circle. Because I need all those arcs going around the circle. And I need to know how many there are. Well, each of those arc is pi long, or sorry, r long because that's the definition of a radius. So I just have to divide this by r and that means that I can fit 2 pi of these arcs all around the circle. Well 2 pi is not a good number. It means that if I uh, divided this up I would have uh, approximately 6.28 of these arcs around the circle, meaning that they don't actually fit perfectly into the circle, which also means that we're going to have to use fractions when we're working with radians. So converting between radians and degrees is simply a ratio and proportion question. If you can remember one of these two ratios, you can set it up easily. So here's the two ratios that I want you to remember, um, or at least remember one of them. Um, there are two pi radians in 360 degrees. That's what I want you to remember. 2 pi radians over degrees. So radians over degrees is 2 pi over 360. And it doesn't matter whether you use 2 pi over 360 or 360 over 2 pi. You need to remember that 2 pi goes with 360. Or remember that uh, 1 pi is actually 180. 
because we're just going to split the circle in half. If we split the circle in half, uh, when I split 2 pi in half, I only have 1 pi. And when I split the circle in half, I have 180 degrees, what your protractor looks like. So let's convert between the following into radian measure. All you have to do is remember one of these. Pi by 180, and that's how we say it, pi by 180. Pi by 180 is an easy way to do that. Pi by 180 equals something, some sort of radian, let's call it x, over 45 degrees. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by 45. And then we're going to reduce over here to lowest terms. I know that um, 45 actually goes into 180. 45 goes into 180 four times. So what we end up getting here is pi over 4 equals x. So 45 degrees equals pi over 4. Now we can do the same thing with 90. Pi by 180 equals something over 90. And we have to figure out what that radian measure is. Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by 90. This one might be even easier for you to see what goes into it. Um, and this reduces 90 will go into 180 uh, two times. So 90 degrees is known as pi by 2 radians. And you can do it with 30 and 60 as well. I'm going to show it to you on here, and I'm not even, you, I want you to go through this, but I'm going to show you what the answers are, and hopefully you get them. Uh, taking a look over here, I've got the circle, and you can see that at 90 degrees, if we rotate up to 90 degrees, we have pi by 2 radians. Okay, so 30 degrees, looking over here at 30 degrees, it's another one of those special ones. 30 should turn out to be pi by 6, and 60 up here should be pi by 3. And you can sort of think of those, that, I'm not going to write this down, but I want you to think about it as um, if I divide 180 by 3, I get 60 degrees. And so that's why we have pi by 3. Or if I divide 180 by 6, I get 30 degrees. And since 180 is pi, dividing pi by 6 will give me 30 degrees. And that's the same thing that you have here. Now you can go through the, the proportional relationship there, or you can think about it logically the way I just hopefully did for you. Um, but that's the way radians work. And so we got to get you thinking in terms of radians. Okay, now let's take a, take a look the other way. Convert the following radian measure to degrees. Well, this is actually easier than converting uh, the other direction, because all you need to remember here is that pi equals 180. And if pi equals 180, 3 pi, I'm going to stick in 180 in there, over 4, uh, equals 135 degrees. Or 7 pi radians, now this one we're going to have to actually set up a ratio for. If pi's in there, it's really easy, but here, 7.5 radians, now I know this is going to be more than one full rotation, because one full rotation is 6.28, or 2 pi. 2 times 3.14. Okay, so I know this is more than one full rotation, but definitely not enough for two full rotations because two full rotations would be 12.56, right? So to find out exactly, we're going to set up that ratio again. We're going to set up the ratio that says pi over 180 equals, and this time our radiance is going to go on top, 7.5 over x. Now let's cross multiply here. I'm going to have pi x equals 180 times 7.5 and then divide both sides by pi. x equals 180 7.5 over pi. Now you could leave that with the, with pi in the answer but we're not accustomed to seeing degrees with the pi in the answer so you really have to actually multiply that out, do 180 times 7.5 divided by your pi button on your calculator and what you're going to get is approximately 4.29 whoops, sorry, that's not what I meant to say 429.7 degrees. Now here we're going to talk about arc length 
compass rotates through an angle of 3 pi by 5 radians. How long is the arc drawn if the compass is set for 12 centimeter radius? So let's set up a ratio for arc length to a radian angle. Uh, well, actually, let's make sure we understand what's going on here. Uh, we have a compass. You know what a compass looks like, I hope. Uh, and it's drawing a circle. And it says in that circle, this is 12 centimeters long. And if that is 12 centimeters long, and it draws an arc, it's not going to draw the whole circle. It's only going to draw an arc that's 3 pi by 5. And 3 pi by 5 is a little bit bigger than 90 degrees. If we start thinking in terms of those, because 90 degrees is pi by 2, and 3 over 5 is bigger than, than a half. 2.5 over 5 would be equal to a half. And so if I want half a pi, I have to have 2.5 over 5. Now this is bigger than 2.5. So since it's bigger than 2.5, it's going to be uh, over here somewhere. Bigger than two and a half, but not one full pi, which would take us to half the circle. So here's here's the setup for this question. I want to know how long this arc is. How much pencil lead drew that arc? So we're going to set up a ratio of arc length to radian angle. Um, and we're going to start with what we know. So an arc length, how about all the way around the circle? If this compass had rotated all the way around the circle, it would have gone... 2 pi r. Okay, that's the arc length because that's the circumference of a circle. Uh, and the angle all the way around the circle would be 2 pi. Okay, in degrees it's 360, but one full rotation in radians is 2 pi. So in that case, um, arc length, and we're going to reduce arc length, call arc length simply a, and we're going to call our angle theta. So a divided by theta is simply, see how this cancels out? This 2 pi takes out that 2 pi. So a divided by theta is simply the radius. And we can rearrange that and say arc length equals r theta. And this is actually a very simple um, formula. Let's see what this says over here. It says, note that the ratio of the arc length to the angle will be the same for any arc length because of the symmetry of the circle. So we can find the ratio by using the whole circle. So we use the whole circle to start with. And we've calculated this formula for arc length. And now that we have the formula for arc length, it is going to be so simple to plug into that formula. Uh, if I want to find the arc length, I need the radius, which in this case was 12 centimeters. And I need theta, where theta is in radians. Theta is in radians. In this case, if theta is not in radians, working in degrees messes us up big time. Uh, so 3 pi over 5. Think about what it would be in degrees. This on the bottom would be 360, and there wouldn't be all of this neat cancelling going on um, to get rid of the pi. So pi would still have to be involved, which is nasty. Okay, so what do we got here? We end up with... Um, that's going to be 36 pi over 5. And this would be our exact answer. But if someone asked you how long something was and you told them, oh, 36 pi over 5, uh, they probably wouldn't be too happy with you. They probably want some sort of a decimal equivalent um, because this is still in centimeters because the radius was in centimeters. And 36 pi over 5 centimeters is something that people can't really wrap their heads around. So you get to punch that into your calculator. 36 times pi divided by 5 is going to give us 22.6 centimeters approximately because we took the pi out of there. Okay, now lastly, we're going to talk about angular velocity. And what does that mean? Well, it means how many degrees or how many radians you spin around in a given measure of time. Um, so this says a figure skater spins so that they rotate 15 times in 5 seconds. Calculate the angular velocity in A, degrees per second, and B, radians per second. So uh, angular velocity. is defined as um, the angle 
per unit of time. So in part A, we want it in degrees. So the angle, it says they rotate 15 times in 5 seconds. So the angle in degrees is going to equal those 15 times times 360 degrees. So 15 times 360. 15 times 360, let's pull up my calculator, I don't feel like doing that in my head. 15 times 360 is 5400 degrees. Now since we want the angular velocity, we're going to say V equals angle over time, which in this case is going to be 5400 over, and now our time here is 5 seconds. Now if I wanted that in minutes, I would have to convert 5 seconds to a minute and make that division, but we don't care about that so much. And so in this case, 1080. 1080 degrees per second. Now part B, if we want it in radians, um, again, we have to calculate the angle first. This spun 15 times and in radians 360 is actually 2 pi. Uh, and that is going to be 30 pi and we're not going to take that pi away from here. Uh, we're going to leave this in pi because most of the time in radians you have a pi. So velocity equals the angle per time and the angle is 30 pi over and again it's 5 seconds. So what does that mean? Well, it means that uh, I can cancel the 5 into the 30 and this is actually 6 pi radians, we short radians to rad per second. So it goes 6 pi radians every second. Um, and that's it. That's your angular velocity. So just remember that for angular velocity, Velocity is the angle divided by the time, and if you want it in radians, work in radians. If you want it in degrees, work in degrees. Okay. Uh, and that completes this video.